few people had asked how I do the impulse dots, so this is a video to show you it's going to be an impulse um, vase. What I do is I've got black slip in here, a slightly thinner than for drippy slippy pieces because you want it to not go to peaks when you um, put a blob on. You don't want a sharp tip to it, you want it to round itself off. Um, my slip is made from my clay trimmings with water added and then I colour it black with oxides rather than stain just because it's cheaper and works just as well for this. So what I do is I mark a line on in essentially felt tip. It's a permanent marker but basically more or less anything will burn off in the kiln because unless it's designed to, to stay put um, the heat will just get rid of it. So permanent marker, nice soft tip, marks the line on, do the dots on the line and then um, that will disappear in the firing. And then this is a Zeem precision applicator, it's just a slip trailer with a very small nozzle. Um, and that's it really. And then just gently squeeze it till you get it beading out like that. Um, and what will happen is as that dries it will shrink down but it gives it a raised edge so the glaze will break around it. The other advantage to using oxides as the colourant is that they will have more of an effect on the glaze as it goes past. I find stain is um, so well kind of mixed and prepared and inert that it's far more predictable but part of that is that it doesn't do anything as interesting. So my colour for the black slip at the moment is 1% each of red iron oxide, manganese dioxide, chromium oxide and cobalt oxide. You can use less chrome and cobalt to make it cheaper. Uh, but the idea behind those is based off uh, Robin Hopper. Yeah, Robin Hopper's um, black stain recipe. And you've got a blue, a green, a red, and you know, manganese is a bit weird, but but the idea is once you add all those together, you've got black. So I just do these by eye about a centimetre apart for the first line. Always worth resting the piece against your hand so that you're more stable. And when you get to the last little gap, go halfway, then halfway between those. And that way you don't have one uneven space. You smooth out the gap. Then pick how far you're going to go below and just go around going halfway between the upper tops. And this will just give you something interesting for the glaze to react to. But you can vary the thickness of the glaze. The thicker it is, Obviously, the larger the dots will stay. Um, as I said, if you go too thick, they'll start forming sharp peaks, and then when they're fired, you can actually cut yourself on them. So it's not ideal. And you can use something like sodium silicate to deflocculate the glaze, uh, uh, slip, sorry. Um, what that does is it forces <laughs> it's a tricky explanation but it makes the clay particles behave as though they're, they've got more water in them in between them than they do so it makes it runnier with less water um, which gives you the best of both worlds, but comes with its own downsides in terms of preparing it. So, that's it. Two rows of dots. Um, they'll, you can already 
see the other ones have gone matte and they basically at this point they'll remain like that bisque via them they're attached and then put contrast glaze up there and then a glaze that moves further down which will bring the contrasting glaze with it and as it flows past the dots it breaks up the flow and colours it slightly so it does make it darker I think probably because it's picking up cobalt but it could be a combination of multiple but yeah that's it um, very simple the only technical bit is getting the thickness of the slip the way you want it different thicknesses will do different things but it's really just down to taste